Hello guys and welcome to my TypeScript series where I talk about how to code with TypeScript. In this episode I'm gonna talk about functions and some TypeScript features of functions. Some of the features are available also in ES6 without TypeScript, but TypeScript adds much more stuff. So let's start. Let's assume we have a function and we'll call it getError which will receive a message and a user and what it will do is we'll simply return the error message with the user. So the error message uh, 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 requesting user will be the user. Okay. Let's see what it does simply by logging the result console log sorry log get error for some error and uh, some user okay so let's compile it and let's run it Okay, so we see the error, some error, requesting user, some user. When we look at the function like this, get error, which receives message and the user, uh, we can guess that the message should be a simple string, but the user, we do not know what we need to pass there without looking at the implementation. The user can be a string, uh, which is what we expect here, but uh, what if the function actually expects the user to be an object which defines the username, the last name, the first name, the age, and uh, much more information about the user. So uh, without types we cannot really know what it's supposed to be. Uh, one way to fix it is by uh, change, changing the user name to uh, the user variable to username. Uh, the other way is to add types. Uh, let's look at how we can fix it by adding types. Uh, before we do it, let's extract this to let error. Uh, to log b get error and we we'll log it error to log. Moreover, if we look at like this, uh, the result function, the result of the function get error. Uh, we do not know what the result is because, well, here it says string, yeah, but it's because TypeScript guessed it. But in pure JavaScript, we cannot know what the type of the error uh, we, are, we are receiving. So, for example, here we receive a string, but it can be actually a, a, an error message, an error object, uh, which has also a message and uh, some other properties uh, regarding the error. Uh, without the type, it's difficult to know without looking at the implementation. Uh, and again, one way to fix it is changing the name of the function, get error string. But uh, when we have types, it's simply unnecessary. So how can we fix it? Simply by supplying the uh, types of the parameters and the types of the uh, return value of the function. We simply do it by adding some types here, here, and here. Let's simply uh, rearrange the function for you to get to see it clearer. Okay, so now it accepts a message which is a string, a user which is also a string, and the return value of the function is also a string. Uh, so now when we look at the signature of the function, uh, we get the same result and we actually know here uh, what are the types and what the function expects to get and what the function returns. Now, suppose we want to pass the function as a parameter to another function or just assign it to a new variable, uh, like so. Uh, let's, uh, I don't know, get error func b get error. Uh, and suppose we want to be type safe. How can we specify the type of the function? Well, the type of the function, uh, the function of the get error, is actually uh, described as uh, a narrow function. It looks like a narrow function, but it's not. And it contains of the first argument, which is a string, the second argument, which is also a string, and the return value, 
which is also a string. So uh, this is uh, me saying that the girl error func is a variable, which is a function, which accepts two strings and returns a string. Uh, notice that the uh, parameters of the getter error func uh, are not uh, necessary equal to the names of the parameters that get error uh, receives, uh, but it can be. So I can change it to a message and to the user and it will work. But if we leave it like this and we use the get error func and call it, we'll see the names of the A and the B parameters instead of the message and the user. Uh, so if we want to uh, I don't know, be more uh, clear. Let's change it to a message and the user. And now we will see the message and the user. Uh, okay, so let's just log it also. Console log the getter func with, uh, I don't know, one and the user will be What I'm doing wrong here, cannot find name console. What's wrong? Condols, okay, I made a typo. So after I build it and run it again, now we'll see the second output, error one, requesting user two. So you can see uh, the variable get error func is actually assigned with the function uh, get error. Uh, but now let's assume we want to reuse the type we defined here and have multiple uh, areas of the code having the same type. It won't be such a good idea of copy pasting uh, the uh, declaration of the function uh, like this uh, because uh, if we in some point want to change it, it will be hard to go over all the places and change it and most probably we will forget some of the places. So the solution here is to define, define an interface, interface uh, get error function and it will be an interface of a message string user string returns a string. Sorry. Like this. With what it says is that getter function is an interface of a function, which means when I, for example, create a get error function of type get error function, okay, without uh, assigning it, I can use it console log get error function get error function and use it with some message one and user one. What? Okay, sorry. Yeah, like this. So now it says uh, it autocompletes me with, with the uh, definition I give. So for you to see it clearer, let's change it to message and user and now it used the definition of the message and the user I gave in the interface. The more interesting part is even though the function get error doesn't relate, doesn't have any connection with the get error function interface I defined here, uh, it uses the duck typing of TypeScript to actually be able to uh, assign the get error function I defined here to the getter function variable I defined here and use it. So let's see what happens after I compile it and run it again. And you can see it works uh, and you have no uh, compilation errors or runtime errors. Now let's assume we have uh, some error we want to create depending of whether we have the user or we don't have the user. So let's create another function. Let's call it function uh, get error optional user okay 
and we will receive the message which will be a string and we will receive a user okay but and we will show a string of course the error but we do not always want to receive the user what do i mean by this uh, i mean uh, sometimes we can call it with only the message because we do not know the user or sometimes we can call it with the user because we know it so how do we do it simply by specifying the question mark uh, and it says that the user parameter is optional and now we can uh, write a code like this if the user exists return uh, i don't know optional error error sorry message plus uh, i don't know user 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 no otherwise if we don't have the user we will return optional only error with the message okay and let's log it console log get error optional user with only a message error one console oh my god i'm typing console i cannot type console today console log the same thing but also let's specify the user user two so let's build it and run it okay so the first type we are getting optional only error because we didn't specify the user so we're getting here and the second time we're getting the uh, optional error error one <coughs> sorry and also the user uh, and when we look at the sensor we see that the user is optional because of the question mark here and both calling the uh, function with uh, only the message and with the user uh, is okay from the compile uh, from the compiler but when we look at the same code uh, for the original function and like we remove the user here uh, the compiler screws at us and says that uh, the supply parameters do not match any signature uh, of call target okay so let's return it like this uh, and this is how you create optional parameters now let's assume we always want uh, the error to be of the same structure but we not all we do not always know what is the user of, for this error and we want the error to be the same for all, all the cases um, the we do not know the user so uh, one way we can do it is simply passing the unknown uh, for the user uh, but uh, this also has a problem with it uh, because uh, sometimes we can mistype the unknown uh, if we write a code we do not always remember what is the default user we want to pass when it's unknown so uh, there is actually a quite a simple solution for this uh, which is default parameters so let's create a function for this and let's use the same logs for the new function we'll create in a second so let's call it get error default user okay and we want to uh, get there uh, regardless of did either we pass the user or not and if we didn't pass the user we want to uh, instead of the username uh, that it will have the unknown typed for it so let's implement it by simply take this rename it okay and we will always return the same string uh, optional error let's call it instead of optional default error so we can see it clearly here and uh, instead of passing it the user as an optional we will pass it uh, with a default value so when we build it 
and run it. We'll see that without the user it will type the unknown user and with the user it will type the uh, actual user. What it does in the behind the scenes is actually checking uh, the condition whether the user is undefined. If it's undefined it passes the unknown, otherwise it passes the uh, user uh, we passed here. Sometimes we want to call a function and uh, we want to use uh, some unknown number of variables. For example, uh, suppose we want to type and use something like this. Uh, we assume we have a function called log errors and we want to call it like this, one time like this and one time we want to call it with two parameters and sometimes we want to call it with even more parameters like this Okay, and we do not know actually the number of parameters we want to call it, but uh, the uh, behavior should be the same. Here it's simple uh, to actually change it to uh, an array, okay, an array of, uh, uh, of strings, and uh, use the log errors to receive uh, only an array of strings and uh, iterating over it. But in the sake of the example, let's assume we want it to be like this. Okay, so uh, what we can do here is create the function log errors and receive the errors like this. Errors, which is a, a string array. Okay, it doesn't return anything. Uh, what's wrong? I'm tapping again, okay, I'm tapping wrongly again, okay. So, uh, and what we will do here is the same. We'll log, console log the errors uh, joined with, a, join with a space separate. Let's use it with this dot space, okay, and run it like compile and run it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so now we see that the errors are actually uh, logged like we expected and we do not have to pass it as an array. In the example I gave here, uh, what we can do is actually call the function without any parameters at all and it will be okay. Uh, but if we want to, uh, to make sure that at least one error is defined, yeah, we can define a single error and use this as rest errors, okay, and this way, uh, this way, sorry, only uh, at least one parameter must be passed, so we need to change it a little bit uh, here, error, Okay, let's do it like this. Uh, rest error errors. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Let all errors be the error and the rest errors. Okay, and what I'll have here after I compile it. Let me just show you what we'll, I'll get and I'll explain what I did here. Okay, and so you see the output is the same. What I did here is actually receive uh, the first argument to the error variable and the rest of the errors uh, came with uh, together bundled in the single array called uh, rest errors. And here what I did is created uh, a new array of all errors, put the first error uh, as the first item of the array and uh, destructed the rest errors array uh, to, uh, to items and combined it in the simple array. Uh, what it actually, it's, uh, it's the same as writing 
like this rest errors at first place, rest errors at second place, and so on, uh, with, without knowing the number of uh, the items. It's now another feature of a uh, TypeScript, and actually ES6. Now let's assume we, we are writing some, uh, some uh, complicated uh, API for using, I don't know, geometries, and uh, we want to be able to log uh, some point um, like this. Let's uh, use it like this, log point, and we can use it with uh, one, two, like one representing the x and uh, two representing the y but we also want to call it like this uh, three four okay and uh, for uh, for the example it's enough so what i'm uh, looking at here i'm looking at function overloading we want to be able for the convenience of the user not the convenience of the uh, function uh, writer, we want to be able to log the point regardless of whether the point has uh, is an object okay, with x and y properties or uh, a point is actually uh, two uh, numbers which represent the x and the y. First of all, we need to declare all uh, the possibilities of the overloads and then implement it in the general way. So let's see. Uh, 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 uh. So let's declare the log point, which can have the number and the number y. Also, log point can receive a, a point, which is a point. Let's declare interface point, something that has x number and y number. <clears throat> okay, and sorry, function, function, and the last thing is log point, the general uh, thing. So param one, which is any, and param two, which is any, and it doesn't return anything. Okay, I'm typing wrongly again. Log point, log point. What's Missing here. Okay, so okay, what it says to me is uh, the log point here is uh, compatible with the uh, general uh, with the general function, but the second log point is not compatible because the general expects two parameters, the general function, and this the second one only has one parameter. So what I do here is say it's an optional parameter. Okay. So, uh, the way I implement it is simply by checking the type of the first parameter. So, if the per type of param1 is an object, so uh, let's uh, log point x, y, uh, param1 x param 1 y otherwise log point x y is param 1 param 2 okay and log point x y should be a function which always receives a number x and y which is actually like a private function let's assume it's a private function which the user does, uh, isn't aware and we will log it console log uh, i don't know how will we log it like this let's use the new syntax uh, x how do you do it x and do, 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 y okay so let's check what we get here after we actually compile it and run it. Okay, so now we see the first log point actually prints the 1, 2 and the second prints the 3 and 4. So let's look again at what happened here. <coughs> the first log point call is using the overload of the x number and the y number. 
and the second overload is using the log point point overload. Now both of the calls uh, go over the general function and the general function receives inside the param1 and param2. Uh, for the first time the param1 is actually 1 and param2 is 2 and for the second call and the param1 is the object, the param2 is undefined. So uh, after I check the param1 type and I see it's an object, it's, it, repre it represents the second call. And for the first call, the param1 uh, type is a number, so it will go to the uh, log point xy uh, function and will pass the 1 and 2 here. And for the second call, it will pass the param x, which is 3, and param y, which is 4. And the log point uh, xy is actually a, a private function, uh, which the user doesn't see, and it always expects to get the point as an x and y, and the log point only translates it to the language of uh, log point xy. Now, uh, now you can see what I meant by saying that it is uh, convenient for the user which uses the API and not so much convenient for the user that implements it because uh, you need to write some ugly uh, type checking uh, logic uh, which is not always pretty but if you, uh, if you are insisting on making the API for the user uh, very convenient this is the way you do it with TypeScript. The final thing that I'm gonna show you is uh, parameter destructuring and to make it more clear why it is useful uh, okay I'm gonna move it like this and create an interface of a conf I don't know uh, log configuration uh, which will have uh, I don't know a font which is a string and uh, I don't know font size which is a string let's call it not log configuration because log doesn't usually manage fonts and stuff uh, I don't know message user message configuration okay so let's assume we have a font font size uh, and I don't know width number uh, height number and uh, other stuff now we want to create a function, okay, which is a show message to user, which receives the configuration, configuration, which is user message configuration, and log and uh, creates the message for the user. Uh, for the sake of the example, let's just uh, log uh, console log the uh, width multiplied by height. So how do we do it? Firstly, first thing we uh, create a const width will be a configuration dot width and, and extract the height configuration dot height and we log the width multiplied by height. Okay, and now we can use its show message to user uh, with uh, all the parameters, I don't know, font, uh, I don't care, uh, font size, I don't know what string, it should be any number, font size, uh, I don't know, some number, width is 4, and height is 5, so it should log 20 to us, when I run it and it logs 20 okay as expected but all this code here okay it's simple for now but sometimes we want to extract only some parts of the configuration where many we can use a, what's called a object destructuring like this we can create width and height like this simply by destructuring the, the configuration okay and the output is the same and but uh, moreover we can do this 
only uh, also inside the uh, declaration of the function. So let's do it. We want to receive width and height of the user message configuration. So let's I don't know change it to four and and six. So you'll see that the code runs and it runs 24 but uh, it does more than just uh, reducing the number of lines of the function it actually makes the function more readable and more documented because when I look at this show message to user really like this I can clearly see that even though the user message configuration is what the show message to user expects to get, what it actually needs is the width and the height. We are showing what, uh, what the function really needs to, to take and what it uses. So it doesn't use the font size or, or the font of the uh, configuration, only the width and the height. Moreover, it's not just the width and the height, simple two uh, numbers, it's the numbers of the message configuration okay it's more information about the width and the height it gives it the width and the height the context we have seen how to add types to function to the parameters and the return time of the function how to make function overloads how to uh, declare default and rest parameters of the function and how to destructure the parameters given to the function these are uh, useful tools so use them wisely you have watched an episode about functions in TypeScript. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment and you can see more TypeScript videos by clicking over here. If you've decided that you've watched all the TypeScript videos you wanted and you want to see more content, you can freely go to my channel and subscribe to it over here. See you next time on Programmers.